Without the power of God behind everything I do, I really am completely inadequate. I'm helping the culture. These guys are these guys are part of us as well. You know, these guys are our, our cousin. I'm helping the culture. I'm I'm do, I'm pushing the culture forward in another way. Hey, black child, be what you can be. Learn what you must learn. Do what you can. What, what do you do, you do after you read? read? Oh. What, what do you do, you do after, after you know, know all, right? right? And you, 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 you can, can say, say that you're truly conscious. How are you putting what you know into action? This is the Initiative Radio Show, shifting the paradigm through conversation on any and everything relating to our communities and culture. Now introducing your new girl, Jasmine Renee. Jasmine. What's up? What's up? Good morning. Um, you know, technical difficulty. So I'm gonna run, I'm gonna run the the intro back because the music was playing over it. So bear with me, please. Without, Without the, the power, power of God, God behind, behind everything, everything I, do, I do, I really, I really am completely, completely inadequate. inadequate. I'm helping the culture. These guys are these guys are part of us as well. You know, these guys are our, our cousin. I'm helping the culture. I'm I'm do, I'm pushing the culture forward in another way. Hey, black child, be what you can be. Learn what you must learn. Do what you can do, and tomorrow. What do you do after you read? Oh. What do you do after you know all, right? And, and you can say that you're truly conscious. How are you putting what you know into action? This is the Initiative Radio Show, shifting the paradigm through conversation on any and everything relating to our communities and culture. Now introducing your new girl, Jasmine Renee. What's up, what's up? It's your new girl, Jasmine Renee, here at the studio. Got started maybe like 10 minutes late, but we're good. Um, but yeah, happy Saturday. Um, what is it, the 20th? How crazy is that? Is it the 20th or the 21st? Is it the 20th? Wait, it's a little too long. Okay, I think that should be cool. Um... It's the 20th. That's crazy. Like, I feel like this year kind of just started. Um, it's kind of been going by super fast, but it's been a dope year. I was looking through my Instagram pictures, like, the other night, and I was just like, oh, I've had a pretty dope 2018 so far. Like, I really cannot complain. And if tomorrow was January 1st, um, like, I would be like, okay, yeah, like, you know. It was dope, and I really did appreciate the time spent. And I, well, we still have t at least two, two full months left for me to, um, you know, make it better. So I plan to, and then just getting ready for like holiday season and all of that. But um, as far as my week, I had a pretty good week. The week, the past two weeks have went by extremely fast. Um, today I do not have any games, so I'm about to chill, have a chill Saturday. Um, and just, you know, like, prepare for the week and all of that. Um, but, yeah, the week was cool. I was able to go to the Compton Open Mic. Uh, I helped set up for that. And then um, I went to, I don't think I did anything else. I just did that. And then a lot of, like, work. I was going to post something about, like, being in the back Um like making things work backstage because I'm in, I do have my hand in a lot of things uh, where you won't typically like see my face, but my work is being shown through um, a few different like organizations or just collectives and stuff. So uh, be on the lookout for that. And just to anybody like you don't to everybody that's listening, you don't always have to be like on the front line. Your face doesn't have to always be in front of everything. The main thing that you want to do is remain consistent and then also like keep um your work consistent and allow it to also like improve and I think that's what I'm doing right now is just making sure like I'm improving my skills making sure I'm improving um the things that I really want to do so that when it does come time for me to produce or push things um 
you know, they'll be great. So that's that. And as far as community events goes, I do. Okay. So this neck, not tomorrow, but next Sunday, the, we, the initiative are having our, I don't know. I think it's like our sixth homeless drive. So we're doing a homeless drive back down on town and fifth. Um, if you have any donations or, any connections to like free food that we can get or if you want to donate please come down um or not come down please just hit me hit me and let me know and I will definitely um come get some stuff from you um if yeah that's pretty much it but you guys should come down it's at three it's on a Sunday so after church um or after you know you're done with your you know getting your hangover together you can come uh, donate for a good cause, donate your time, donate some goods. Uh, but yeah, that is what's happening next Sunday. And then we also know every Sunday is Spoken Word Sunday. And then on Tuesdays, um, they have this, the Unplugged is hosting their events at the study. And what else? There was something else. Today at the study, Lost Speaks Values, we had her on the show maybe like three weeks ago her mj and pula she's doing um a book club collaboration with um unplugged so yeah that's that um and shout out to keith good news he's in the studio well he's about to leave but um yeah so that's that that's uh, a little bit about what's going on i'm completely like blanking on things that are happening this weekend i should have wrote them down but i did not but it's okay. We will continue. Um, I'm going to try and get out of your hair or your ears, I should say. Um, and just kind of jump into some things that I feel are important to discuss. Um, so this past week, the conversation, if you saw the post, uh, the conversation today will be on healing and health. Um, and I also put on the flyer kind of thing is that it's not just physical, uh, that there are mental aspects, there are internal aspects that need to be dealt with. And I really wanted to focus on that today. However, we know that in society, in today's society with people are with people that feel like their feelings trump how they should behave uh when it comes to other people we saw another instance of i was supposed to look up her name and i completely forgot to but it was a 14 year old black girl in florida um and i in south miami i believe she was basically like punched out by the cops the south miami um police department she was just punched out she was on the ground and the person filming basically was like why are you punching her um her hands were basically underneath her so the story um that the police department put out was that there were some teens in the mall and they were disturbing people and basically just being a disturbance and the mall cops said that they just wanted them to be like you know removed from the property this is that and the other and then apparently that did happen and apparently some other teens or maybe the same teens i'm not sure they were back on the property being a disturbance again so one of the boys was arrested and then the girl i guess she what the police said was that she was being mouthy and that she wasn't um complying and she was resisting all of this with whatever um so they said her fists were clenched and that in order to get her to open up her fist they had to punch her in her side for her to comply basically um and to me, it's like, don't you guys learn other tactics to get people to comply? Don't you guys have words? Aren't you a grown man? And isn't she a 14-year-old girl? Uh, if a 14-year-old girl is stronger than you as a grown man, I think there's an issue. Um, it, two, let's say two. So I'm not going to say maybe there are some physically weak men out there and that's fine. Um, no shade, but... 
if there's two grown men and one 14 year old girl why would we ever need to punch her why would you ever feel like you need to punch anybody as a police officer i don't understand that at all and then whether she cussed you out or not whether she used her words um i don't see why they felt the need or why the cops felt the need to apply force with her like it's so disheartening because at this point in time there's a lot of things that happen to us there's things that happen to um black females in our community there's things that happen to black females outside of our community there are things that happen to us in school once we get out of school and we start working there are things that happen there um there's just a lot of things that happen to black people in general and it's really disheartening to see that whether they thought she was doing something wrong or not the underlying theme of this is that there's an attack on black people and it doesn't even have to just be by cops now people are literally calling the cops on black people for bs and at this point like a lot of people have been saying like there need there needs to be a call or some type of like punishment for that like you need to be reprimanded for that because we know that when you call the cops on a black person there's a very good chance that one they might not come out alive or two they'll end up in jail for um being wrongfully accused of something or they'll end up being shot or socked in the stomach no matter what age you are so i think it's just really disheartening to see that people cannot like understand these things that people are just having the hardest time understanding the fact that we are human um and aside from like the adults that our children our children are human and they do things wrong just like every single child does um i've taught you know a plethora of of races i mean maybe not that big but i've taught a few different you know races and not the the mass majority is is hispanic and black but there have been other kids and i've seen them act up in the same way that our kids act up i've seen them even in some cases it was worse than the way that our kids were acting up so i don't understand it i don't understand how we as humans or them as humans can't come to like this type of realist ideology or this realist mindset of they are people they need to be dealt the way that we wish to be dealt we don't want to see our child or our daughter getting punched or socked out by cops regardless of what she does um i think that's like a real thing so i don't really have like answers when it comes to that it's just one of those things where you have to like hope and pray yes and i'm not saying hope and pray meaning the only thing you are doing is sitting on your knees i'm saying hoping and praying hoping and praying and putting action towards these things um speaking about them talking to them and actually putting force into them if they want to put force into us we have to put force into them and i was watching a video or something and everyone you know when michelle obama was like you know when they go low we go high everyone kind of rolled with that and was like yeah you know that's what we're gonna do but i think at some point in time you have to draw the line like i'm not gonna keep being this upstanding citizen um when i'm being treated worse than animals are being treated i'm not gonna continue to be this like good um individual to you when i'm being mistreated i think people should be dealt with the way that they are dealing with others and i think this mentality is this oh when they go low we go high has been black people's mentality for a very very long time and that is part of the reason why they feel like it's okay to treat us the way that we are now we now i will say that we have seen examples of black activists black teachers black educators black writers they have pushed and they have knocked down walls and doors but as a majority of black people all together like we all know um that it takes a lot to get black people on the same page and i think as a majority we've been more so passive we've allowed things to kind of just like oh it's okay like you know well as long as you don't do this as long as you don't say it in a mean way then you don't have to like you can say it or as long as you don't 
hit me in my face, you can hit me. Like, I think those things are problematic when it comes to dealing with humans. Um, and now what is it like? As long as you don't kill them, I kill the, you know, black people, you're good. You know, I, I just don't understand that. So that's my take on the situation that happened with her. Shout out to RJ, RJ the poet, RJ the poet, RJ the poet. If you didn't know, now you do. Um, he is tuning in. And also, um, RJ is dropping a book. And let's see, let's see, let's see. I'm about to find the flyer right now. That's what I should have said when I was looking for things to say. Please bear with me. RJ the poet. Oh, wait, the flyer's not up on your page. The flyer is definitely on Twitter. Sorry, guys. I'm trying to look for something. Nope, it's not that one. Okay, I think it's coming up. Wait, RJ, what happened to the flyer? Okay. I'll talk to him. Oh, wait. Okay, well, either way. I'm sorry, y'all. That pause. So he said it's not... Okay, it's not your book, but you have two poems published in the anthology. Okay, either way, you're a published writer, and we want to celebrate you. Um, let me know so I can post the flyer. I can't find the flyer. I think it's like the 29th or something. Um, yeah, please do. I think it's the it's sometime. It's coming up this week. I know that it's it's sometime within the next 10 days. It's coming up before the end of October. So. I definitely want to support him. Uh, I like randomly was just thinking about it. I have been thinking about this um, release that's going on for a minute. And uh, I tweeted about you. So it's dope that you're now here listening. But um, yeah, I just appreciate good people. I really do. So RJ the Poet is one of those. And then, of course, a lot of you guys that are probably listening are good people, too. But um, also, if you are listening and you cannot comment, you need to download the app. Go ahead, download the app, because the app allows you to comment and interact with me. Also, um, it allows you to interact with the people that are in the comments. So RJ just got back to us. It is October 24th, uh, the event. And I want to say... Please correct me if I'm wrong, RJ. Okay. Good. Look, it's already, it's in my, good. Okay. So I want to say it's at the World Stage Press. Uh, please correct me if I'm wrong, RJ. Um, so it's an anthology for social and environmental justice, um, which I think is super dope and is in alignment with what I was just talking about when it comes to like black bodies. So, um, I will be posting that for sure. I will not go let that go without posting it. Like I said, it is this Wednesday. Um, hope to see you guys there for sure. And then, um, let's get into it. So when it comes to healing, so something that kind of sparked this, I had hit up a friend and I was just like, yo, um, you came into my mind and though, okay. Yeah. So I was like, you came into my mind when I was thinking about what to write this week, what to talk about this week on the radio show. And she basically sent me back that, that what's been on her mind is healing and, and healing, not physically, but internally and what that looks like. So, you know, me, I had to go and look up some things and kind of define words and one of my most favorite things to do is defining words is defining words and kind of knocking down the perception we have of these words and putting the actual like meaning behind them and taking away like these stigmas that are surrounded by these words um, and you guys have heard me talk about spirituality a lot. And when I hear about spirituality, I think of church. And I'm pretty sure a lot of you guys think 
spirituality is a religious thing but even if you are not tied to a religion even if you are um I wish that we don't have people like this, but even if you are atheists and not that atheists are bad, but I just wish that people believed in the higher power. I think that's very important in life. But anyways, if you are atheist, you still have a spirit. So it's not necessarily connected to spirituality. Although religion does talk a lot about spirit. It's not something where the spirit is birth. The spirit is always existing. And that was something that I learned through defining the word. Um, and I had to, you know, dismantle those stigmas myself. And that's why I'm talking about it on the show. But yeah, so talking about healing and I know when we talk about healing, I know that I personally talk about a lot of internal things and I talk about doing the work and self love and self care a lot because it's very necessary and it proves to like be good for me, even though sometimes I'm not completely perfect in it, but those things prove to be beneficial for me when I'm operating in them and realizing that there's no end goal in my journeys of self-love and and self-care and um, learning myself. There's no end goal. As long as I'm alive, I have to work these things. Um, so when it comes to healing, I don't want people to think it's a feminine thing that people with free spirits operate in. I don't want that to be the thing. I want it to be that Healing is something that everybody needs to operate in. And I believe it was Mike Tyson. The good news, if you guys follow them, if not, follow the good news on uh, Instagram. And they posted, uh, Big Boy was doing an interview with Mike Tyson. And they basically started talking about uh, Mike Tyson being bipolar. And they started talking about how Kanye, whether he is or not bipolar. And they also had mentioned like that. Uh, Mike Tyson is on medication and he asked him, big boy asked him, he was just like, well, what would you, how, how would you be without your medication? Or how did you get through you being bipolar? And he was just like, yo, I just took my medicine. And he was like, at the end of the day, Kanye, you just have to take your meds. And I think that is so problematic. And if you just started listening to this show, you know that a lot, I think that a lot of things are problematic. I think I don't really a thousand a hundred percent i'll say agree with everybody um there aren't too many people or too many things that someone can say to me that i'll just be like oh yeah i a hundred percent agree um just because we're different people and i feel like we shouldn't always agree with people now if it's factual it's factual but if our experiences are different then that means that we have different reasonings as to why we operate in certain realms or why we do certain things that we do so when he said that i'm like maybe people are kind of like oh yeah you know just take your meds but at the end of the day um there's something that needs to be dealt with in place of the meds or the need for the meds needs to be dealt with. There are a lot of things that we are going through that we are dealing with. And that's where healing comes in. That is telling us that we need to be taking medication. And I think it's very problematic for Mike Tyson to say something like that. No shade to him, but I just cannot sit with that statement. I don't think taking your meds is the end all be all to how you can become better. Something for me, a very personal experience. Um, so I had a kid and a, a student. Um, and the student, it, he was maybe, yeah, he was in seventh grade and he was on medication and he was a very lovable person. Um, he was very just, he was, he was a black boy. He was a boy. He did what he wanted to do. He was very smart and he was on medication because he was very hyper and he just kind of like was doing a lot. He played football. He was just the center of attention, whatever. And they put him on medication. And literally when he was on his medication, he would be slumped over on the wall and he wouldn't want to do anything. And, and he would be up, he wouldn't be asleep, but he would just be slumped over. And it hurt my heart so much because one, I have my three little brothers. So I know how boys are. And even though they would get on my nerves when we were younger because they were just, it was three of them and it was just a lot. Like I would have hated to see them not interacting with each other or maybe even not bothering me. Like that was something I would have hated to see. So when I would teach and some days he would come in on the medication and some days not, it was very like disheartening to see him on that. And it was like, well, 
these teachers are saying that he's not sitting down and being quiet, but when he's in my class, he was. And that was kind of the thing where it was like he would do the math. And I didn't even know this. I thought he was doing his work in all the classes and he wouldn't go in any of his other classes and do that work. And my thing was, okay, so clearly he's capable, but maybe that we're not getting his attention fully, or maybe there's something that is going on. And I feel like there's an obligation that we as adults or educators or parents that there's an obligation to that student that we have and you have to figure out what it is to get him ignited and the fact that he's not being ignited does not mean that he needs to be put on medication and what happens is that seventh grade boy then turns into a kanye west or a mike tyson who feels like they cannot cooperate without medication and even mike tyson was just like yo i wouldn't be here if it wasn't for that and it's like That's exactly what we see in the classroom where the boys are like, yo, I can't do work today because I'm not on my medication and I'm crazy when I'm not on my medication. Instead of, no, you need to learn how to deal with these things and you need to learn how to navigate through these feelings that you have and you need to learn how to voice if something is not going right for you in this space. You need to learn how to voice that. You need to learn how to speak up about that. And we don't teach our boys that. We teach them to kind of like settle and deal and be a man and for some reason being a man is tied with this thing that you just take bullets and you don't deal with your trauma you just you just run through walls and you don't deal with your trauma and that's not what being a man is in no way shape or form so i'm gonna go to the comments um rj the poet said therapy yes therapy is always good therapy and listen getting a therapist that reflects who you are as a person that can relate to who you are as a person so no just because you go get a therapist doesn't mean that that therapy will work for you um you have to do your work in that in the same way where you go shop for a car or a house if you have five kids you're not gonna go get um a one bedroom apartment or a studio apartment you're probably gonna try and get something that's big or if you have five kids you're not gonna buy a convertible you're probably gonna buy an suv the same way that we do that work for things that we want is the same way that we need to do our work for the research that we're um outsourcing for um yes i believe that it definitely does do wonders the teachers may not have been as engaging as you are that that may have been the thing and and that's the problem that i have that that's an option that when we're looking at matters as to why medication is needed let's look at all the variables let's look at what are the other adults in his life doing and where is he operating the best if he's operating the best in football what are they doing in football that's keeping his attention and maybe let's try to implement what's happening in football into the classroom or maybe let's try to be a collective effort where we have mom dad we have football coaches and we have teachers and we're all just basically um not actually forming a circle but just forming this support around him and making sure that he knows that he's being checked on and I know for a fact that when you get coaches involved well one because I'm an athlete so once you was talking to my coaches and I knew that both my coach and my teacher also had connection to my parents. Once that happened, it was like, okay, I, I, as a student, I felt better being in those spaces. And it was like, you know, it became a joke. Like, Oh, you know, you don't want me to talk to your mom or whatever. And it was like, Oh no, 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 no. Let me get it together. Or you don't want me to talk to your coach. And it's like, no, let me get it together. And that teacher or that coach held me to a different standard. And I felt that because they all had a connection that I was safe that no one was going to try and one up me that between all three of these uh points my parents the teachers and my coaches I felt that I was in a bubble per se and I felt like that definitely in high school where um I was I went to guard for three years and it was just an inner, an inner working thing and not that they collectively all met together but because I had played sports because I was at the school for a minute um you know if the teacher came to my game, they would, oh, you know, are you Jazz's mom? Yeah, I'm Jazz's mom. And they would meet. Um, and it was just a good feeling as a student. So now as a teacher, I don't do this all the time, but I definitely try to make sure that there is some type of connection with the outside um, 
extracurricular activities that they're doing. So it's not just, oh, when you come in here, you just see me as Miss Gates or Miss Jasmine. When you go outside, you see me as your supporter. You see me as a support system for you. I'm not just, you know, just a, a teacher that you only see Monday through Friday. But I am someone who will come to your games after school is over. Someone who will go to your, you know, show up at practices, take you to practice, do different stuff like that. Just so that you know, I'm not just here for your education. I'm here for you as an individual. Um, and that's even with like my high school girls. Now it's like, yo, I'm not just here for you to get better in basketball at all. And honestly, I, not that I don't care, but I need you to be a better person. I need you to understand that when you get to my age and you've been done hooping for about two years, who are you going to be? Who are you going to stand up to be? Who are they going to see when you don't have a ball in your hand? You don't have a Jersey on and they can't identify you as number 24 or number 32. Who is it that they see? And that's something that I'm definitely pushing um, in those pushing when I'm in those relationships, I should say. Um, back to the comment. That's unity within the community when the teachers, coaches and parents know each other. Yep. I for sure didn't wall out in those classes. Yeah, there and it's it's a special. Uh, I don't know. There's just. This generation, I don't wild out in class either, but this generation is just different. Um, the standards for them are so much lower than what they were when we were in school. And I'm pretty sure maybe our parents will say the same thing. I don't know. But the standards are much lower. And the unity within the community is something that I definitely rock with and I definitely think is very important. And I think what also helps, too, is when you have people like us that are coming in um uh, and showing these kids support, I think when it's someone that doesn't even have a connection to them. So you're not my teacher, you're not my coach, you're not my parent, but you care about me. You care enough to come see me. That's something that I think um, is super dope. Another comment, shout out to Hope. Uh, my high school was really small. That created a family atmosphere. Yeah. And if you don't mind me asking, like, what was your experience there? And well, you said it was a family atmosphere, so I'm sure it had to be like kind of positive. But like, did you do better because of that family atmosphere? Like, how did that kind of uh, benefit you? I think it's a very necessary thing to have a family aspect when working with our kids, especially in this generation, because they go home and. And they're on social media and it's a disconnect from society. I mean, from actual connections with people. And then when they get back to themselves or when they get back to school and stuff, there's no connection. So rather than, you know, you have to be with these kids, let's say what, six to seven hours out the day that they're with you. If it's the lower grades, you know, once you're in middle school and up, you know, you have classes or whatever, but they see you basically three to five times a week you're seeing these kids so you kind of need to get to a point where we understand that we have to build connection that I think a lot of our kids would do better in school we would see them being better people if we did offer up this family aspect to them where it wasn't that I'm like oh well I'm be your big cousin and you need to know that like no not only was I I didn't have to say it at all, but I showed up as if I was a family member. I showed up. I talked to them as if I was like someone important in their life or as if they were someone important in my life. I think a lot of the kids need that. And I've been pushing this since I started talk. I mean, since I started this radio show, um, like these kids need us. And I hope like people that have listened over time, I hope we have reached out to more kids, but our kids are our kids, our cousins, our little sisters, our little brothers, they need us. And it's not hard because I'm not saying that you need to go to boys and girls clubs. I'm not saying that you need to take a day off of work to go talk to school. I mean, students in school. I'm saying that you need to work with those that you see. And like I always say, it's not enough to just be like, oh, I want to put you on my Snapchat or my Instagram or I want to post you when it's your birthday. Like, no, how are you pouring into this baby? How are you pouring into this child? Your, you know, your little cousin is 14, 15 years old. That's a hard age. How are, How is she seeing you? Does she think that you're someone that she wants to be like? Are you allowing her to see the good things that you're doing as well as when you fail, but seeing you get back up? Like those are very important things that 
our generation, our, the younger generation needs. And I feel like if we could be more open with who we are as people, and first of all, we have to deal with ourselves. So I'm going to get to healing in a little bit. But we have to deal with ourselves. We have to be good people. Um, and I think that's definitely what teaching showed me. Like, And no, not in any way, shape, or form was I just completely perfect when it came to like me making transitions and me deciding to be better in my life not everything clicked a hundred percent but I made steps steps to becoming better and it took a little more you know being added to my life for me to be like okay I can't keep doing this I can't keep doing that and I'm actually grateful for it I'm grateful for those people that are in my life that have held me accountable and are changing my life for the better so another comment I think it's All the teachers knowing every student's name and background gave an individual approach. That's definitely true as well. Um, I think for me, I often say, or I haven't often said this, but being an educator, I will tell my coworkers like, um, not every student needs to know, or not every teacher needs to know every student in a way and I'm about to butcher this but the point is that every student needs to have a teacher that they can call on um every student needs to be able to go to a teacher and whether that or some type of adult on campus and as teachers yes that sounds like a lot yes it sounds like oh my gosh there's so many kids coming to me but if you think about it every day that kid is not going to come to you every that kid is not going to come and spill you know their life onto your lap every day now sometimes some days it might be five kids you know at a time but that's fine but Every student needs to have some type of adult at that, you know, institution or school that cares about them, that they know cares about them. And even though as educators, we should care about all of our kids, but they need to have that one. And I feel like we just get a better turnout when that kid knows that at least one, even in this place that I don't want to be, because a lot of kids don't like going to school in this place that I don't want to be. And I probably hate it. I know that Mrs. or Mr. Um, so-and-so has my back completely a thousand percent and I'm willing to show up for them. And even if some days they don't show up mentally, uh, at more, more times than not, they will, if they know that you care about them. So that's just a takeaway for that. Um, if you are just now tuning in, shout out to Hope and RJ, the poet and Keith there in the comments, um, really engaging with me. And I really appreciate that. Thank you. Hope. I'm not sure. Um, if we've met, but I appreciate you for being in the chat box for sure. And, um, if you are just now tuning in, I am your new girl, Jasmine Renee here at the good news radio station, bringing to you the initiative radio show. Um, and it's just a vibe. I'm loving the music and, um, the comments that are going on are really dope. So now to talk about healing, um, the definition of healing is just the process of becoming healthy. Healthy is being free from illness and illness is, some type of disease or a period of sickness that appears like in your body or mind. So now all of that, those are just definitions um, that I'm posing. So when we talk about being healthy, the thing that I put on the, the thing that I put on the, the, Oh Jesus. The flyer was that, um, it's not just physical and a disease or an illness happens in your body or your mind. So that means that you can be unhealthy mentally as well as you can be unhealthy physically. And I want you guys to understand. Wait one second. Oh, hey, Shalo. I have not seen you since I've been back. We have to definitely connect for sure. We have to. I was thinking about you the other week. I should have sent you a text. But hey, girl. Um... I do know you. We have met before. Um, But yeah, back to that. I want to make sure that that is pushed out that I want to take out the word healed because in this journey of internal healing, you will not be completely healed. Um, And even when we talk about physical stuff, when it comes to cancer and stuff, 
once you do your healing and you go through your radiation and maybe they take the cancer out and they say, oh, you are cancer free. They are still keeping a close eye on your body and what is going on, making sure that the cancer does not come back. So prior to you knowing that you had cancer or anyone knowing that they had cancer, they probably weren't going to the doctor as regularly. They probably weren't um, eating as good as they are after they get hopefully they started eating better and they probably aren't you know doing a lot of the different health additives that they are doing now after the cancer has been removed but when the cancer is removed there you know there's different things that you have to that they learned while they were fighting cancer and after the cancer is removed you hear a lot of times people you know, stay true to these rituals and these things that they are doing just so that they can stay healthy. And you hear them, maybe they have checkups that are, you know, I would imagine mandatory to make sure like the cancer is not coming back and just to make sure your body is functioning correctly. Those things become normal rituals. So that's kind of what I wanted to push today is that healing is something that you go through. We've went through a lot. A lot of us um, have went through like traumatic childhoods or even like early adulthood where we just went through a lot of traumas and we have not dealt with them so now we're at a place where this millennial group we're so huge on self-care and healing and getting to a new spot that we realize that there are so many things in our backpacks and our back pockets um that we have and that are weighing on us and we're like dang you know i have all of these traumas and i don't know how to deal with them and i think Something that is important is just like assessing yourself. So as I was writing, I kind of wrote some type of, it's like a little activity. Um, hopefully I can do some video footage on this, working with other people and just see like how it works together. Um, you know, with someone else being in the studio. So this is basically just like how it works. So it's just taking a look back at your life. And I think you should definitely do this by yourself first. Take a look back at your life and kind of just see like, what were the things that were uncomfortable for me to deal with? And I'm not talking about things that, that it, I mean, yes, if they broke you down, that was probably uncomfortable. So those you should definitely write down, but I'm not talking about only those things that broke you down completely where you felt that you were at rock bottom i'm talking about the things that made you uncomfortable the things that you still think about today and you're like why do i still remember that um whether it was something good and you just didn't know how to receive it or if it was something where you felt weird um in a situation i think write down those things and as you write them down there are going to be things that come up that you're not going to want to write down or that you're not going to want to deal with and i think and doing this exercise, the most important thing is being truthful to yourself and, and granting yourself honesty in this um, in this um, exercise and just trusting yourself that trust yourself. If it comes up, then it needs to be written down. And, and, and at the end of it, if you see that, you know, it, it isn't really something that you need to deal with, then that's fine. But write those things down. And I think after you write those things down, um, you should kind of like let that sit for a little bit, maybe for a few days and then come back a little bit, um, a few days later or something. Um, in the comments, Shalua said, how far back should we go? As far as you can remember, I would say just go as far as you can remember it might be kind of a long list for some of us for some of us it might be a short list um but go back as far as you can remember um and then also remember while you are doing this i think this is an important thing for those of us that are at this age now where we have children or we wish to have children please understand that the healing isn't just for you when you heal you heal basically up your lineage so there's a lot of traumas that have been passed down to you. And if you were to heal right now where you are as the seed that you are, you are going to stop a lot of those traumas from being passed on to your children. So for those of us that don't have children, like think about those things that affected you that you wouldn't want to affect your child, um, your future child. And for those of us that do or for those of you guys who do have children, think of those things that you don't want to affect your physical child that you're looking at. Like, what wouldn't you want your child to say that this happened to you that happened to them that maybe happened to you? Write those things down. Like I said, give it some time, maybe even a day, maybe give it some hours. It just depends on you. Allow yourself to kind of like 
though they're gonna bring up emotions they're gonna bring up a lot of negative feelings and that's completely fine it's a part of the healing healing in, in no way shape or form is pretty but allow that to kind of like surface and just go on about your day also like i said last week remember to be grateful remember to acknowledge the fact that you are not in those things anymore and that you are still living even after those things happen to you do that and then um come back to it come back to it and then let's right and this is a long exercise i know but it's it should work i think it should work um and then write down how those things made you feel so this might be a very take a very long time maybe do five a day five or six a day write down how those things make you feel and then once you finish just look back over them and look and see how many of those how many negative feelings that you felt throughout your lifetime and if you can pinpoint maybe a certain time in your life when a lot more was going on and what was connected to those things and figure out how to not continue those things i think healing will definitely take place in that and i think that's one of the many exercises i'm pretty sure there's a lot but those are this is one that i thought of um those are one of the many things that you can do and of course like if you want to just do five at a time, write down five things, take some time, chill, be grateful for the fact that you have made it out of those moments and then come back and write down the feelings and the emotions that they brought. And when you look at those emotions, those are all uncomfortable diseases. So when I say disease, when I look at disease now, I always look at it as this and then ease, which means it was just uncomfortable. So if there was some type of dis-ease and you did not deal with it and when you wrote it down, that was maybe the first time that you ever confronted those feelings, that means that healing needs to be taking place in that in that space. Um, and like I said before, like your spirit is where your emotions are held. And, and a lot of times like it's a chair and we are just having our emotions sit in this chair that's like worn down and torn down and it's just not anything um and it's not helping us so we need to like rebuild build our spirit back up build that chair back up deal with these emotions that we see on a paper and this is just to help you realize that how much healing needs to take place and like i said a lot of us are realizing now like we're in our 20s and we're realizing oh man like we need to heal we need to push things forward um or push things out of our mind and this will definitely help you like acknowledge and pinpoint certain things that you need to um deal with and one thing that i will say is um yes healing is not always pretty it is not always good tears will come you will probably you might hate yourself in the in the process you might hate other people in the process and that is all fine the only thing that really matters is that you don't go out and like don't cause harm to anybody be upset be angry allow those emotions to surface and and remove let them just remove as as you're healing allow them to remove and don't ever think that you're running this race of internal healing until like a finish point there's no finishing point there's no end point there's no like oh yeah you did it you're good no not at all it's going to be a long long journey um one, because like I said, a lot of us are coming into this healing aspect now that we're in our 20s, 30s, 40s, whatever. And we haven't like looked at, we haven't really healed before. So you're going to have to heal for all of those years. And then of course, we know that life provides so many um, twists and turns and so many disappointments as well as like things that we should be grateful for. But you're going to have to heal from those things too. And I think it is most beneficial for you to do this. Um, I know I was reading and somebody was like, you don't want to find this in a person. And it is most beneficial for you to do this by yourself. Because I'm saying from experience, like it is definitely difficult. And it's not difficult. It's not easy to hear from other people, whether you love them or not, or whether they have your best interest at mind. It's not easy to hear from them like your traumas and when someone comes into your life and they really care about you they'll be able to see like what your traumas are and see why it is that you do the things that you do and they'll be able to point it out and it's not easy to to hear that from somebody else you know what they are but 
to think and you've been able to kind of navigate through them without anybody else acknowledging them, without anybody else caring enough to say something. But when you get someone that does care about you in your life, like they are able to point those things out and it's not the most easiest thing to hear. So before you find that person that you think is going to help you through life or be your life partner, I think it is most beneficial to us as the individual to figure out or to heal help heal ourselves to a point acknowledge what your traumas are acknowledge the different behaviors that you have um and like with the exercise just realize what it is that you need to heal from and as you're healing from them I think you can just continue to keep this journal and as you keep this journal just write you know how they made you feel, what emotions you felt, and then what that now currently is doing in your life now. Um, And I'll probably write this down and like just post it just so people can have it. But just figure out what is that thing that is going on? How is that thing existing in your life now? What is it doing for you in your life now? And then, like I said, you'll see more how you need to heal and what things you need to deal with. And maybe some things that you, some people you need to talk to, um, maybe even just sitting in and dealing with your spirit. Now I was listening to a podcast and this lady was like, you know, I need a healing and I was getting healing from, you know, she said she wanted to be blessed and she didn't, I don't think she's really tied or she practices any particular religion, but she was just like, yo, I just wanted to be blessed. And I was like, yo, if I, you know, but the monks, the preachers, Jesus, like anybody just, I just wanted to be blessed. And I think That was one of the most beautiful things that I've heard. Um, Just being able to identify the good in different religions. Now, I'm not that person. I I probably won't really go and sit down and and operate in different religions. I'll sit there and I'll um, watch, but I won't necessarily like practice it or uh, be a part of it just because of my own but I think for someone who is saying that they aren't connected to a religion to say that yeah I just experienced all of them and I was just willing to experience all of them to better myself I think that's a super dope thing um and shout out to her I think her name was Miranda Alexander her name was not Miranda I don't know it was something with am. It may have been Miranda. I'm not sure. But if you are just now tuning in, this is your new girl, Jasmine Renee, here at the Good News Radio Station, bringing to you the Initiative Radio Show. Um, I'm just sitting here talking about healing and um, some podcasts that I listen to and some just different insights that I've gotten when it comes to healing. And like I said, it's no deadline to it so please don't ever think like yeah you know I'm healed like no you're not you you have some other traumas that you need to deal with we all do um and I also wrote down that mental ailments and physical illnesses are very different and should be looked at differently however the same attention should be applied to both now like one thing that I want you to understand is in your healing journey, a lot of the times when we go through traumatic things physically, in order to heal, we have to rest. A lot of times we have to be no, we have to kind of not operate the like not operate at all. Um, and we have to chill for a little bit. And I think that's what has to happen mentally as well. I'm not saying you need to take off from your job, but sometimes you need to just focus on that one thing. You need to show yourself gratitude for it. I think that's always a good thing. Showing yourself gratitude, getting up and being thankful for where you are, but then also doing the work, also doing what uh, actually hurts, what doesn't feel good. I think that is extremely necessary. And, um, It'll definitely come out like on the good side if you're actually doing your work. So like I said, you're not going to be able to, okay, today is the day I'm going to focus on the trauma that I, you know, that stems from something that happened when I was in middle school and tomorrow I'm going to be better from it. No, that's not how it's going to work at all. Um, And like I said earlier with the cancer thing, like there's a lot of people that have cancer whose lives are, yes, they may have been cured, but their lives are you know, hugely affected by the fact that they had cancer. And there's a lot of things that they have to do different um, to make sure that cancer does not come back. And there's a lot of things that you're going to learn in your healing that are tactics that you need to keep with you. So 
that when something does come up, when something traumatic does come, you're like, you know what? When I was younger, I didn't deal with this correctly. I didn't speak up when I needed to. I didn't say no or I didn't. Um, I allowed something to go too far. So now I'm not going to allow it to go too far. It's traumatic and I can see you, you know, where you stand. So I'm saying no, or I'm, I'm removing myself because this is not going to, you know, do anything for me. So that's something. Um, and then, like I said, with, uh, cause I talked to Rosalind, my friend, who's the one who like pushed this out. Um, healing is not going to get everyone the same benefit. Um, now for one, one's healing might look like joy and another one's healing might look like, you know, tears, or it might look like, um, some kind of defeat or at, at some point in time, it might be hearing, okay, we're going to have to, you know, amputate your leg, something like that. Like, and if you're thinking like mentally, or, you know, you're not going to be able to use this. So now you need to relearn how to live because this can't, exist in your life anymore a lot of times healing is is that you know and and sometimes it is hearing that you don't have cancer and never getting it never getting it again and that's you letting go of things and something not coming back but then sometimes sometimes and and this is the example that keeps coming up in my head and it's a dramatic one but um forgive me but I'm just gonna say it you know someone a, a woman that was raped and has to deal or and and has a child out of that um that's one of those things where it's like that's an example of uh we're gonna have to amputate your leg but you're gonna be okay um you're gonna have to deal with this trauma and you're gonna have to look at the what came from this trauma for uh the rest of your life but you're gonna be okay Um, and you still need to heal. You still need to make sure that that wound is okay. You still need to make sure that where they cut the leg off, that you're treating that. And now you have to make sure that you're getting maybe, a um, um, Jesus Christ, you're on crutches or you're in a wheelchair. Um, and you have to re, you know, realign what you're doing. You have to figure out different customs. You have to figure out different things to, get by how to clean yourself every day you have to relearn how to do these things um sometimes you might need help for the the first part maybe you're crying a lot in the in the first few years of having this child maybe that's what it is um but at the end of it all you will be okay and this is a thing that i want people to understand just because something damaged you and please understand that you can be damaged and i think that has to be understood for you to know that even if you are damaged you can still push forth and still be useful you're not useless just because you are damaged just because something like that happens to you in your life it does not mean that you cannot um be a great asset to the world or to the people that are around you so that has to be understood that just because you are damaged or something is damaged inside of you it does not mean that you're useless and you can still get up and be a tool to people some of the most damaged people help are the most useful because they're helping other damaged people that are maybe even doing worse than they are or that are doing a little better than they are they're helping people so never think that because something traumatic happened to you or because you're really hurting about something and something happens to you and you hate it so much never think that you still can't be a shining light to others or even to yourself don't think that you can't still be that beautiful person don't think that you're not that beautiful person in that moment but that's i'm i try to do these shows a little shorter now we're about to reach an hour um but that's pretty much it. Like it just, and knowing like it's your responsibility to heal. It's your responsibility to get to a point where you can just begin to heal. And like I said, even in this self love, like self care journey, like, no, it's not always easy. No, taking care of my skin is not always easy. And it's very minor things, but I'm lazy a lot of the times. And it's just a lot like it is sometimes just with everything compiled together so no it's not easy and i'm on this journey with everybody um i'm gonna actually do this and it's not an easy thing this exercise that i pushed it or put together it's not an easy thing even like me i i am like hesitant like oh wow that might 
be a lot, um, you know, for me to handle. But I, I'm on this journey. And um, if I want to push you guys to do anything, I, w- I have to lead by example. So it's our responsibility to uh, heal ourselves because no one is obligated to heal you. No one is obligated to apologize to you for what they've done to you. But at the end of the day, you have to live with yourself. You have to forgive yourself. You have to, I hate to say you have to forgive that person, but you do. You have to free yourself of that trauma. You have to free yourself of what they did wrong. Uh, I know it hurts, but at the end of the day, let them deal with it. Um, Let them deal with the hurt that they caused you and you don't have to hold on to it you don't because what does it do for you at the end of the day if you're holding on to like a a boo-boo diaper what is it going to do for you make them take it out or you throw it in the trash and you have them clean themselves up you don't have to be there to help clean them up you do your own healing you throw it in the trash release that and deal with your healing and throwing it in the trash does not mean that you're completely in the clear and you're automatically healed now no you still have to deal with maybe the stench in the air maybe some things got on your hands you still have to deal with some of those things you still have to wash yourself of that you still have to get rid of those clothes because maybe they have things on them too so those are things like I said we have a responsibility um and no please I wish like I want to maybe I need to do a little more work and alter a few things that I'm saying but I don't want people to feel like it's just a feminine thing or it's just something that free spirits do or that only happens in the church I want like everybody to operate in this I want everybody to be able to like hear things like this and just be like okay um maybe I do need to heal um and maybe I do need to deal with certain things maybe you know some things have happened to me that are just not fair in my eyes. And I think that's another thing that you can write down. Like what's fair to you? What, what happened that wasn't fair to you that you feel like is just not, and I'm not talking about, Oh, you didn't get the money or whatever. I'm talking about those things. Like, um, when we talk about blended families, like, you know, why did my dad marry another woman and he left me and my mom or why didn't I have my dad, but my, my cousins did, or why was my mom not in the picture? Um, or why was I the one that got into the car accident? You know, why me? Like, I wasn't doing that. Um, so, yeah, that's something that I think I wasn't doing that or I wasn't doing anything that should have got me into the car accident. Sorry, I kind of stopped there. But that's pretty much it. Um, yeah, like I said, if you have a mind and you can highlight anything traumatic that has happened to you, you need to heal for sure and some of your healing some of our healing might be easier than others some of our healing might be harder than others um but at the end of the day it's healing and it benefits you and a lot of times we don't do things to benefit ourselves a lot of things because those things are internal and we have to deal with those things so we were present for every traumatic thing that happened to us so we know we know what those things are a lot of times we try to suppress them and we try to keep them in the back and not deal with them And that's why self-care and self-love has been such a hard thing for us because you have to love through those things that you have tried to suppress. Those things that you don't want nobody to know, you have to love through. You have to care about those things. And a lot of times we don't want to speak those things up. But I'm telling you right now, do it by yourself. Speak those things up while you're in the presence of you. And a lot of times that's even harder because we know the exact truth of what happened in that moment. We know what we did wrong in some moments we know what other people did to us and we were very present there and sometimes we don't want to relive those moments but it's necessary for you to trust yourself um allow your heart to grow in this exercise if you guys plan on doing it and if you do uh do the exercise or if you want to hear it again um just let me know send me a, a message or something like that and then i can send you something or give me feedback on it um but that's pretty much it when it comes to healing i hope you guys got something from this episode and if not um re-listen to it because you should have but that is that i think the takeaway this week would uh definitely be just like finding what needs to be healed i think that should be it like find what needs to be healed in your life um 
and be honest with yourself grant yourself honesty trust yourself that's another thing like the takeaway should be trust yourself trust yourself in your process don't try to hide things from yourself even though you can't really hide things from yourself but don't try to not speak of things because they hurt so much don't try to suppress things because they hurt so much you owe it to yourself to heal from those things and if they are suppressed they will not heal they will not grow they will not allow you to become a better person if those things are suppressed so please do so I feel good about this episode I'm gonna send it to everyone's dms I think um but yeah this is a pretty good episode and and please do me a favor if you're listening please pass this on to your friends your family your mom your dad all of that um all of us need healing and um shout out to Roz for giving me this topic I think it was very necessary and I really felt um like at home talking about it I really felt good talking about it so thank you so much for all of you guys that have listened remember I will be back I'm always here Saturday mornings at 10 a.m um if you guys like what you hear if you don't like what you hear or if you would want me to discuss anything in the near future hit up my dms follow me um, follow the brand at the initiative no e at the end on instagram and let me know what it is that you think about this um but yeah i'm i'm here for you guys i'm here to push movements to answer questions to push growth to um better me and better us as a community as a people um and that's just you know how the the saying goes but that's that i'm being corny probably but I'm about to go um, and have a just a Saturday, a good Saturday, a free Saturday for sure. But that's it. Make sure you tune in to the the other shows that are here on the Good News Radio Station. Um, They we have so much content now. We have sports. We have mental illness. We have Never Not Extra. We have the Get Right. And there's me. And we also have Brunch with Besties. We have Straight from the League. Um, Straight to the League and yeah we just have so much and they're from pittsburgh brunch uh with besties is from milwaukee and um it's just so much love on the podcast on the radio um station so i really appreciate all of you guys for tuning in thank you and you guys will catch me next saturday at 10 have a blessed week